I'm on my way to interview an owner of an interesting car. I'm just on my way down to Eastern Creek Raceway to have a bit of a chat with Mark about his Triumph Dolomite Sprint race car. Now Eastern Creek's about an hour down the road so I'll see you then. No, I'm not performing any new turns. I'm here talking to Mark about this absolutely wonderful Triumph Dolomite Sprint Group C race car. So. How long have you had this? I bought the car in 1990. 1990, and it's, it's been a race car for a very long time. This car was originally logbooked in July, in July 1977. It was built by Ron Misson for the uh, Ron Hodson Layla dealer team. That would have been a new car at the time. Yeah, I believe it was. I don't know if it was a, a new car or whether it was one they'd pulled off yeah. the lot or something to build up. Yeah. Um, I, I can't tell that. I, I recently got a burst. Uh, British Lale and birth certificate for it, showed when it was manufactured and a few other things while I was trying to sort out with the car. Yeah. Nothing ex exciting came yeah, out of that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, do you want the history from there? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so Ron Milson built the car for Hodgson's. Um, I believe this car was to be raced by Andy Rouse at Bathurst in 77. Right. They were going to, Hodgson's was going to have a really big two car team of, of serious cars with Graham Lawrence in one car. Um, Rouse in this car, and I can't think who the co-driver was, but that was then back to '77s when the big um, issues came about with eligibility yeah. over pistons. They were running high comp pistons, and cams argued, and they withdrew the team, and this car never actually raced. All oh, right. So the first logbook entry as a race car uh, was Bathurst 1979. All right. So by the history, so the history of the car from Hodson's, um, Hodson's disbanded, the cars were sold off. As I said, I believe this was the last car built by Ron for Hotto. Um, this car, as I said, was sold, it ended up going to um, Gerald Kay of Jag Parts in Melbourne. Gerald um, already had another Dolomite, I believe he crashed. I can't remember the whole story, yeah. but Gerald had a Dolomite as well that he raced, but he never actually raced it. If you look at the logbook, he passed the car straight, to, sold it to um, Martin. Uh, and then Martin ran at the Bath of 79. Right. Uh, he then continued to use the car at some ATC, Australian Touring Car Championships eight, um, during 79, 80, through to the end of 84. Right. So it did two Bathurst, uh, 81, uh, sorry, 79 and 81. Uh, and in between it ran at um, Sandown, Calder, Simmons Plains, Cat uh, Adelaide. Um, most of the southern sort of races as a uh, service paradise it's not the one that uh, is off at the oh yes yeah well this car actually ended up doing this this car has had <laughs> it's had a very tough life um in 83 the car was involved in a crash up at surface paradise yep. um you've possibly seen the youtube yep. of the rx7 rolling across the yep. front of the dolly yeah yep. so that took the front end off it uh then in 84 um it went, I can't remember what happened in 84, I lost track. I think it was 83, I think that was the A2C. 84, I can't remember. And then in 85, this car, along with Philip's car, um, got converted to a Group A touring car. Yeah, yeah. Group C finished. Um, we believe these are probably the only two Dolomites to race anywhere in the world as Group A <laughs> touring cars. Because yeah. that finished, 85 was the end of eligibility where yeah. for them. And to turn a Group C Dolomite into a Group A Dolomite, basically, Philip took the flares off and put smaller wheels. Uh, this car had flares on at that point in time. Yeah. It had the flares taken off and the SU, uh, Webers came off and SU covered it. Oh, right, yeah. That was yeah. basically that the, was it. the big conversion back yep. to a yep. Rebay car. Yep. So, mm. yep. so, now, are you someone that gets attached to a car? Do you 
it, is it something like the history of the, your motorsport goes with the car and therefore you want to keep it? Or if someone come along and give you some money, you go, yeah. Oh, if they gave me a serious piece of money, I'd probably pay <laughs> it. Uh, everything's for sale, that yeah, they say. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, look, I've got a soft spot for this car. I mean, I actually pit crewed for this car back in 84 when Philip drove with Martin at the Sandown 500. Yeah. And then I went down in 85 and pit crewed again for the car at the Sandown yeah, 500 yeah. as a Group A car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I had a bit of a, uh, involvement with the car. Always had a soft spot because Philip bought his car you know, yeah. back in 81. Yeah. Uh, 80, 81. Um, so, you know, we had, had a soft spot for the car. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, as I said, we've had it for 30 odd years. So. And so how do you see the future? What are you going to do with it, basically? Um, Good question. I, I, it seems to me you've done the whole group yeah, three so I, I, rest, I think. Unfortunately, I raced or I raced as an, I ran it as a sports sedan for a while and group C car as well. Uh, then I converted it as a improved production car, racing improved production, which did nothing. Like yeah. Virtually do nothing. Take a few rose jointed arms off it uh, and run on radials. Um, it was in fuel injected back in the late nineties. I actually put fuel injection on it, which is probably one of the first sprints to be fuel injected. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we ran quad throttle quad throttle fuel injection on it and that sort of transformed the car, gave a lot more drivability and that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. In its day as an improved production car we'd have a 30-35 car in under 2 litre fuel and um, this car would be in the top 10. Yeah, yeah. So it was a fairly strong car in its day back in that era. Unfortunately technology yeah, <laughs> marches on. a long way now. Yeah. So, um, what am I going to do? Um, I've always liked it looking as we see it. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's some more signage coming from the UK right. which will be Castrol and Dunlop and um, Champion, which was won the car at Bathurst in 81. Yep. So how it's presented here is sort of basically Bathurst 81. Yep. That's what I'm aiming at. That I loved the, the coloured roundels on the doors, and that was yeah. the last time they actually had them on. Yeah. Log booked at that meeting to say they had to come off. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't legal. Um, so yeah, so I had thought about going historic with it. Yeah. But I must admit, a thousand dollars for the C of D is a bit of a sore point with me at the moment. Yeah, well. There's still know. a lot of other things I need to sort out with the car. To be honest, probably just club stuff at the moment. Yeah. A bit of fun. Yeah. A bit of fun. And with Philip got his car going, if we can get on top of both the cars, come out and have a bit of fun with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, back in the old um, improved production days, we drive around Iron Park door handle to door handle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So let's, let's march back in time a little bit. At, at what point in time when you decided to go into motorsport? Um, I, I, Dolomite wasn't your first car. Um, so what was your first motor? I had a TR3A that I bought when I was at school. Right. Um, I went motor racing with that for 12 months until unfortunately it got rolled at Iron Park. We ended up repairing that car. Uh, but at, just before that happened I bought a TR4 which I built into a production sports car and raced for several years a production sports car. Uh, I decided I was a bit over production sports cars. Philip had the Dolomite and I looked at street sedans in those days yep, yep. and this red Dolomite came into my possession. Yep. You have had a, yep. your hand on along the way. <laughs> yep. so I ran the Dolly as a, the red car as a street sedan. Yep. Always thought I'd like to have had a Group C car. Um, as I said, Philip and myself have both done Group C enduro races with this car over the years. Um, so when this became, I tried, you know, when I got it, yeah, yep. I wanted it. I just yep. wanted it. Yeah, <laughs> just I know it's just like that for some reason. You can't explain. Yeah, they are a beautiful thing, I have to say. Oh. So, for non-Dolomite owners, we're dealing with a like, four-cylinder, sixteen-valve single overhead cam engine. Yeah, four-cylinder, uh, slant four, um, basically half of what became a stag motor, stag V8. Um, four-cylinder, sixteen-valve single cam shaft, um, first mass-produced sixteen-valve engine. Uh, the inlet of the camshaft runs the inlet valves directly and the exhaust valves are opened by a rocker using the same cam lobe so quite unusual we only have one cam lobe to operate the inlet and the exhaust yep, valves. Yep. So, yep. And then that runs through a four speed? Yeah four speed this is running a wide ratio gear kit so it has a, quite a large gap between the oh, okay, yep. to split and we run the overdrive and I mean yeah, overdrive is pretty important yep. without it, it's sort of a massive gear change yep. but it, yep. it gives you sort of a six speed reasonably close ratio gearbox. All right, yep. Now the diff. What, what's what's happening? Uh, this is still, this is running a standard Dolomite well, a sprint diff. This has actually got the Bathurst ratio in it, which was the last time the car had sort of been used. Yep. It's got a three seven. Normally we'd run a four one diff ratio. Uh, power lock LSD. This has got intermediate axle bearings to support the axle. All right. Yep. 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 Royal into the rear brake. Yep. Yep. All the problems that you've ever had. Yeah. Yep. 
Yep. And the brakes, of course. Dolomites are not known for yeah. stopping. Um, ventilated front brakes, um, full piston caliper. Um, this car had gone through a series of different calipers. Over yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Originally had APs on it. They got unfortunately destroyed after having a rotor shatter and take the wheel and the hub off and everything else. Uh, then it had some dolomite calipers and then it had some whirlwind calipers <laughs> and now it's actually got a set of Austin Princess calipers on it which are sort of keeping in the period of the yeah, year. yeah. and they're a four piston caliper that will basically bolt straight on with them. Yeah, yeah, which are as rare as anything, aren't they? Uh, bought a brand new out of the UK. Really? Yeah. yeah. What? Free Really? Back in the UK, I bought a brand new ones from them bolt straight up. Really? Yeah. Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you very much for having a little chat about your dolomite. Thanks, Jim. I'm Quack Quick Ballard. Bye for now.